Okay, so several times I've been asked there, are we going to do a kind of an updated yard tour? Um, and I suppose every Christmas we kind of go through a few um, statistics for the channel and stuff like that. So here we go, we'll give an updated one again, keeps people fresh in people's minds, what's around here and what's going on and all that. So we have our two land levelers here. This one, you will have seen this one being made if you want to go back in the videos. Um, as, yeah, do you know what I'll do? I'll put a link to the in the description to the videos of this being made because uh, it might be of some interest. So me, that one is oh, not last year, maybe the year before I think we made that. But like I say, there's footage of it there as well. Um, works pretty good. If I was to change anything, I'd make this gap a bit bigger because what happens when the soil is a bit damp, it, it doesn't flow too nicely through there at all. But if the soil is nice and dry, pure powder, it does a brilliant job. It's actually quite hard to pull it because it carries an extreme amount of soil with it in powdery conditions. Uh, it can bring a 150 horsepower tractor to its knees. Uh, this one, we made it, that's come back seven or eight years ago, I think. It actually works brilliantly, but um, it is a bit light. But it's ideal there for farmers to take and, and use, you know, if we're receiving for a farmer and he wants to do the leveling himself, then that machine is ideal for a handier tractor or something like that. Moving on from that, I don't know will you have seen this trailer, or sorry, the building of this trailer. Um, it was kind of the start of the lockdown, so I'd say that we might have missed out on this just when we started doing the videos, but uh, basically it's a cut down Arctic trailer and uh, we kind of built it from scratch from there on. One strange thing about this trailer, I suppose a funny fact, is it's a little bit wider than normal, which allows us to leave a gap in the middle of the bales. If you see them on the edge, you have like that much of a gap in between them, so it makes it very easy for getting your elephant trunk down in between the bales. Uh, sprung axles, but no sprung drawbar. We didn't go for a sprung drawbar on this one. We put it on one of the other ones, but we didn't bother doing it on this one. And is there any benefit? Hmm, probably is a bit, but not massive at the same time, I would say. Um, here is our high spec 2300 gallon tank we've had this tank now for maybe six years i would say it's been a brilliant tank but it's um it really should have been done this year but just time went against us needs to go for a refurb get sandblast to paint it and new tires and all of that but um it's kind of one of them things we've put in the long finger and it should be done really sooner rather than later but we will get there eventually and moving on from that there then again is our 7550 which i suppose is the tractor i put most of the i do most of the driving on this tractor really um not intentionally or anything it just so happens this is the one i spend most of my time on because i do a lot of the stacking of the bales and the moving of the bales so that's how i'm on her a lot of the time She's fitted with a Q6M loader, which will also fit our 6480 Massey, same brackets on them. But uh, it's a lovely, lovely loader. That's I think it's only two or three years old or something like that. And it also works off the tractor's own joystick, which I will show you here now. It works off the tractor's own joystick, its own spools. So that's how you control your loader. And that's how you work your third service. So very nice setup indeed. Um, the tractor needs to go into the shed as well because we need to do a few jobs to our front axle. And it needs something else to no, I think that's it. Oh yeah, from my one of our front mug yards has been and it needs a full service, but brakes and everything are very good, so it doesn't need anything like that. Uh, bed needs a wash also but it's been used an awful lot so it's kind of hard to get a chance to go at these things with it but um maybe over the course of the next month it's uh on Friedrichstein tires all around but we have traction pluses on the back and traction 65s on the front as far as i'm aware it's hard to get the traction pluses now they had a lovely uh, look to the grip of them but they were they had a lot of problems with cracking so I think Riederstein decided to maybe 
move away from that series of tire um, she would originally have been on seven tens which would have filled the mudguard a bit more but somebody changed her back to 650s which i suppose to be fair is a lot more suitable for our type of work as well and we put these on at the start of this silage season i think the, um, these Friedrichstein tires were put on it and they seem to be performing pretty well to be fair but as you can see a different type of lug pattern on the 65 series we also fitted a front PTO to this earlier in the year uh, she has a brand new Zudberg front PTO unit there's our spare rake our class uh, liner 2900 which I don't know did it come out this year maybe it came out for about 20 acres of stuff but that's it's about all it does every year but those 20 acres it comes out for it can be a, a godsend today you're under a bit of pressure so that kind of sits there as a proper reserve and there is our ts90 that you will all have seen several times pretty much everything done to it now just waiting for our re-registration which is going to be in january and then she's off to her new home in North County Dublin and then we have our Joskin um, Joskin twin axle tank uh, we need to fit the dribble bar to this which we're going to go a bit more into this one is on spool control so we have a bit of thinking to do um, but it will work with the tractor with four spool valves the way we were thinking of going load sensing but I think we might get away without doing that um, some of these were on load sensing and you had a control box in the cab but not this one it's just spools so basically if one spool drops your arm changes your changeover valve and opens your gate valve for letting the slurry into the tank and then when you go folding it up it does that cycle in reverse but that's that tanker um, like I say I need to fit a dribble bar to it that's about all it needs to do uh, the verdict are still kind of out and uh, well the lazy arm is a great job but these things are so heavy they're so so heavy to be moving around and that hose is an awful weight as well due to the size of it um, workable if you're staying in the one pit for the full day then yes it is worth your while because it speeds up your cycle time to a massive amount um, and yeah that's uh, it's a big help moving on from that we have our keenan orbital um dung spreader and that is a surprising machine that we have used a lot more than we thought we would use but they're a very very good machine the only enemy to a keenan is stones net plastic anything like that they're well well able to throw it all out and it, you don't have to spend hours cutting it off inside we've done a bit of work on the flywheel i heard there was some bearings gone and stuff on that and uh, the flights also were warding in it, but all that's done to it now, it needs a rubber on the back door, all right, but uh, we'll get around to that in due course as well, but a very hard machine to drive. Takes a lot of horsepower to turn that big flight wheel. Depends on how, like you can, as you can see there, they have a huge flight wheel, but you can push that ram as far forward as you want. Now, it doesn't spread it right if you do it, but if someone is receding the field and they want to put out a coat of dung, you're pushing that that uh, arm as far forward as fast as you can. That's going to take. That's going to bring 200 horsepower on its knees, and it's a thousand speed as well. So um, it really, really drags them down. Really drags them down. Here is the silage pike that we just basically use for heaping up bushes if we're cutting with the saw head or anything like that. It's not in pretty, but it does our job absolutely perfectly. And here is another one of our bale trailers. Uh, we actually bought in this one. We had nothing to do with the manufacturing of this one at all. And the other bale trailer that we have is out, um, is out with the vegetable farm. They're using it for carrying the Brussels sprouts from the field to the yard. And now moving on from that, as you will have seen in the video lately, is our Martin dribble bar. And that has yet to be fitted to the tanker, but maybe over Christmas or into the new year, we'll get stuck into that process and get that done and finished with and move on to the next job because the jobs just keep mounting and mounting up. So really need to get on them, get all that kind of stuff finished with. Here is a stack of tires. Um, 
any of which probably aren't much use. There's two 42s here that would get you out of trouble, but there's nothing spectacular about them either. I think one of them is a pretty large cut in the size, but still functional if you get stuck. But um, other than that, really not of much use. Here is another, geez, there's some grip on it. Here is another Traction Plus series of Riederstein tire um, that came on our Massey Ferguson 6480. It was here maybe two weeks and we were out munching with the tractor and we met uh, some steel in the ground and it went in through the side of the wall of the tire and uh, made finish that tire. So that tire is of absolutely no use whatsoever and it is 99.9% .9 grip I would say but it's never the bad ones to go is it? Never the bad ones. There's a tanker tire that's also at the end of its life and there are some various super singles there as well and some front tires and, and stuff like that. Here is also, don't even know what that's off of. Um, that came on our CVX195 actually that tire. And here is our MX loader off of uh, the 6465 Massey that's in the shade now at the moment. But that is so old. So one change that has to go on this, that this loader has an MX style headstock. And we will be changing that over to Euro for the new owner. Or not Euro, Rossmoor for the new owner as his existing tractor already has Rossmoor bracket. So that's one change that has to go on this. Um, MX loaders are done differently to Quickie as you have no pin here to latch in. You just drive in, once you push these all the way forward, they latch back and your loader is locked in. It's a pretty fast setup to be fair once you're used to it, but it's not the easiest thing in the world to get used to. And moving on from that, we have a 3 mil loader here, which has belonged to the CS110. You will have seen in the videos, and when he has the tractor done, he's going to come back for the loader, pick his loader up. And uh, I think he's going to do a few jobs to this loader as well. So that's just sitting there until that day is ready. There's just a grubber we have from the vid farm that um, uh, we had to do some uh, indoor horse arenas. And they were too tough for the land level or two dig into them so that was the the tool of choice and there is our slurry card system at uh, the back half of it um our lagoon mixer is here that's a brilliant tool it's quite a strong one as well with a very long reach it's a cross lagoon mixer but really they are repeat on they're just branded as cross uh, but a very very good tool all i've really done to that is change bearings in the bottom of it and it has worked away absolutely perfectly uh here is a double bale handler we made and if we got time again we'd make one pretty much the exact same as it because it's a uh, like i say capable of carrying the tree which you will have seen us doing often and uh, it's never broken or twisted or bent or anything like that it's a very very strong handler and all in all, a very good job indeed. Uh, there's some pallet forks there. Here's our scully bale grab, which would be my preference of all of them. I think uh, after giving it a full season review, the scully one would be uh, my go-to handler out of all of them. And here is our original handler, our quickie, which we used to use with the the tubes on it but now it's just resigned to stacking here moving bales in the winter but it's 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 spun out now it's it's 10 years old so it's 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 warden to date but it it's um it's fine for that job but if you were to go using it for summer work it would need a, a big pin and bush job redone on it uh, at this stage there's also our second power harrow which never Never made it to shed storage this winter. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about power harrows next year. I think maybe it might be a change. We might go for uh, might go for something newer um, next year. Cause we had a bit of an incident with our our other one. It got a bit damaged, so the, um, the love for that now is gone. To go stripping it all down and doing it up again after already going through the the process doesn't entice me too much, but. I don't know what we'll do. We might change. We might just go for um, go for maybe a newer harrow or something like that. I don't know. 
And here is our double trunk, which we uh, we made ourselves, but um, it definitely needs a few improvements. Uh, it's getting quite worn now due to the fact that we were, we didn't really do a great job here on this part of it now, to be fair. Um, so that needs to be looked at. Uh, the pins there in the bottom of the rams. Never made them greasable. Uh, that was my own choice. I don't know why I decided that. Probably it was so far into the project, it was maybe a bit sick of the whole thing. But um, yeah, other than that, brilliant, brilliant handler. But just need a bit of attention there. Also, our check valves cause it to close um, in judders. I don't know what the reason is for that, but that's something that needs to be looked at as well. Um, all our hitches here now at the moment. Well, there's one of them has is, is sold, but uh, all the hitches are here. We actually have use for for tractors that are coming, and our own tractors and stuff like that. So, uh, hitches for sale at the moment. Not a whole pile, but in January we're going to have a lot of John Deere hitches coming in. Some very very good John Deere hitches, which will be available. They should be in maybe early to mid January. Um, but I'll keep you updated on the channel anyway. Um, they're off a of very low hour, 155 hours and stuff like that. So they'll be a straight fit all the way back to a 6 8 John Deere. They'll fit 6 8, 6 9s, I think 6 6 10s, 6 8 10s, 6 9 10s. Uh, again, the 6 cylinder 20s and up along. Um, there's a weight block as well, as you'll have seen that before. An MX weight block. I like that weight block actually. I think uh, someday I might pull it in, paint it black, and put a case sticker along the front of it. Uh, in due course this is our implement mover a very very handy machine you just hook in your top link there and you have two uh, legs for uh, anything you're moving around the air to rest on and it's very very handy for moving stuff also another double bale handler here which has been through the war a little bit so has got a good bit of welding but um anyway that's uh that's a story for another day is um look it, it battles away fine again another machine that's handy for farmers if they want to borrow it and do their own or stuff like that and here's the tr handler which is a very good one as well but uh, like i say my preference might lie with scully ones for the moment anyway that's my opinion uh some scrap we're gathering up some scrap you will have seen us tidying up the shade and just started heaping up bits again must be transferred down to the barrel there um various pallets that were used for pickup pictures and stuff but uh need to put some of them into the shade and put away more stuff brand new pickup hitch off of a maxim um that came off a tractor that was sold to england was never actually went out to a customer then went to europe and they took the pickup hitch off of it so as you can see that's never ever been used and we'll put that on maybe one of our own tractors or else one going for sale and here you can see a European hitch. This is off of a Massey Ferguson. The Massey Ferguson ones are uh, pretty unique in the way that the top link piece is also part of the hitch. So if you put a new hitch on a Massey Ferguson, it's two parts. The slaying track is a brilliant job uh, for cutting, you know, gorse or any of that kind of stuff on the mini digger. That, that has done a bit of work for us this year. Uh, very, very good machine indeed. And very handy tool to have for that kind of work. Uh, potato ridger that um, I think my father bought. They had intended on setting a, a little garden there with a few potatoes in it uh, this year. But um, So that's what that was for. That will go on the little fint. And this hitch is, uh, this is one of the ones that are sold. That's to fit a CVX. And that one is off of a Maxim also. There's another double bale handler and there is our saw blade which was out last week and could do with a bit of a sharpen up now again so to sharpen these up you you weld um hard facing you build up the hard facing points on these with um hard facing welding rods or mig wire but they don't have hard facing mig wire so that's the job for the rod welder and over there is our volvo loading shovel which is another machine that could do with a, a bit of tlc but again It'll probably have to battle away for another year before we get around to doing that. Uh, it's an unbelievably handy tool for us and it does quite an amount more work than we ever thought we would have for it. It's, it's, it nearly has purpose all throughout the year, which we thought it would just literally be used for stacking bales and that's it. But no, that machine does a lot of work for us. Um, 
and we use it very very often indeed and here is a seed drill that i intended and converting to a grass drill that's a grain drill same as our other drill uh, it's actually identical to our other drill but i just never got around to it but it's in very very good condition and it's sitting in the shed so it can stay there for the time being whether it'll ever be transferred onto a power harrow or not who knows but it's there anyway and it's ready to go if the need ever occurs and here is our 175 that is our first ever tier 3 cvx uh, we've had that tractor for two years now and lovely tractor very happy with it but it needs its brakes done so they're all below in the shade just hopefully over the course of the next week get to pull it into the shade and get those jobs done to it and also here is Cavernland 4 for a reversible plow vary with with uh, hydraulic vary with with hydraulic uh, cross shaft as well it's a very nice plow to use very very nice plow and it does tidy work a lot of people um i suppose Cavernland would be the most popular one out of the whole lot but there's a little bit of a change going there now you see more brands like coon and uh other ones making an impact but there was a time that the only plow really to have was a Cavernland plow and here you can see our hedge cutter um we put a new head in this three years ago and um, but we're getting very disappointed with these flails so i've given out about it several times i think in the new year or when our season is over maybe i'm going to bite the bullet and go away and get um way and get non-genuine ones a full set of non-genuine ones and be finished with it because they are just a disaster an absolute out and out disaster i would say i have 25 of them changed this year um they just break there they all snap off here and we had the other type you know the the t flail or the hammer heads or whatever they call them same thing you just break constantly so gonna go away from genuine flails now and try maybe steel ones or i think you can get the forged ones or something like that so maybe look you let me know um you probably know more about it than i do let me know what flails are the best that hedge cutter is also nearly seven and a half meter reach so once she's out to the last it lifts it it could lift your wheel at this side there won't be much pressure on this side anyway uh when that is boomed out to the last but um, CVXs are lovely for hedge cutting. Used, our 1170 used to it all. It's been transferred over to the 175 now that the 1170 is gone. And here is our 160. Um, lovely tractor. Lovely, smooth, clean tractor. Um, doesn't need a whole pile of work this winter, I don't think. Our front suspension isn't quite working rightly. But uh, she's a lovely, tidy tractor. Just need a set of solid rims for us to complete her. Also on Vredish 9 tires. But you can see even the, I think it's from pumping them too hard. No, that wasn't us, but uh, that's that's the way them Vredish lines wear sometimes, which is kind of funny, but uh, anyway. And moving on from that, we have our McHale Fusion 3, which is this year's model. And it has completed its bail now for this year. Um, we will do an in-depth talk about that in tomorrow's video uh, we'll give a full rundown on how we get on with it for the season and we'll give you a, a whole lot of the information on that so that'll be in tomorrow's video and we have our coon this carriage stored away here uh, for the winter also bales of hay we made this summer but um uh, it's in it's in a farmyard it's in a, one of our customers yards i'm storing a bit of this stuff so our coon disc carrow is there. We have that maybe about four years now. Brilliant tool. Very heavy. Does a very heavy duty job. I would like to have a, a mounted one as well. Just for doing the finer little bits. But that's a good heavy tool in tough conditions. And our TMC can sell a mulcher. Which had a pretty quiet year this year. But um, anyway, it's um, it's still, you know, it's there. It's paid for everything. So I'm not too fussed about uh how much work that does anymore like i say it's paid for it's there it's uh it's a heavy duty machine that's going to last a long time so um what odds does it make really if it does 100 hours or 250 hours it's uh, it's all the one at this stage um but a lot of them have popped up over the last couple of years 
uh, you know there's more and more of them so obviously your workload is going to be diluted the more of them there is in an area so that's probably leading to a bit of that as well and i suppose one of the reasons it's a bit quieter is this we got this going this was sitting in the grass there for a couple of years but we got it going this summer and uh, it's a grand handy machine for doing bits of top and top and gardens and all that kind of carry on that actually done a lot this year um doing a lot of like i say household jobs jobs and all that and uh, that's very handy tool to have and um, keep that going for another couple of years as well and here is our hardy sprayer which is a machine i would like to change in the next year or so maybe might be even change the spring i don't know but it does a nice bit of work and it's just getting a bit long in the tooth now so might change that uh our fertilizer spreader that's around with a good few years as well with the crane and it makes it a very handy tool no reason to change that whatsoever it's doing the workload we will have to do and our x8s are here um need a bit of work coming into the spring now once uh, the weather improves we'll get them home and the conditioners need a i suppose there's a day or two's working tidying all of that side of it up but um yeah we'll get that done too and here's the stole tether this is sold uh, probably goes in the springtime for delivery because the guy that has a bot says he has absolutely nowhere to put it at the moment so that's uh that's going to sit around until then and here is our crone which we will be keeping uh for the time being i've spotted a nice patterns or so maybe the crone might go but um for now the crone is still sitting around but a very good uh, turner and finally there is our 702 rake which uh, is new this year and has performed very very well indeed also um finishing off our, our tour of the yard and the tour of what's around here here is our pto driven compressor this comes from a massive ferguson 30e industrial loader we made up the frame mounted that on it and it's driven from our front pto but uh our shaft twisted there so i need to get a new shaft made up for it but it uh, works quite well actually so that's there and uh that's very handy for blowing out pto lines but also blowing down machinery and all those kind of things here we have a set of loader brackets to fit a cvx um yeah there's off a tier three cvx i'm pretty sure probably keep them because you'd never know the day we'll want them and here is our log splitter we made this maybe going back six or seven years ago um and it's a handy thing to have every now and again we don't use it that much but again a handy thing to have and here is our styre which you will have seen in the videos and if you haven't seen it oh, we have a bird we have a bird above us um if you haven't seen it give a look back there we got this running it hadn't ran for years upon years upon years and we got it going there a couple of weeks ago so that was interesting and once we get a bit of time we'll get stuck back into this tractor again and finally last tractor is our fint farmer 102 which uh we're very much in love with it's a lovely straight original tractor and we use that there with our little more sometimes because we look after a couple of gardens and that's kind of that's her purpose of also taking it to a couple of vintage runs I met a couple of uh, viewers as well, which was nice too. So finally, last pieces of equipment here are our Cryman slurry pump. This is a 2019 pump and we got this first. It had the older type primer on it, so last year we changed it over to this primer and it made a massive difference. Makes it way easier to prime the pump. A couple of seconds, away you go and it's pumping. So that's uh that's our pump has performed flawlessly uh, a bit of wear in it now to be fair probably needs a small bit of work into it so we'll see after the season what we'll do with it maybe and there is our front reeler just a plain straightforward 200 meter front reeler holds 200 meters of hose does exactly what it says in the tin so that's pretty much it for the tour uh one final bit of oil well, hold on we'll go over here and give a look at what's here uh, there are some tires but they're all pretty much rubbish there's one or two sound tires in here actually and there's rims off of the 6290 we changed them over the solids because they were cracking a lot from the loader work but uh 
every tire here is pretty much finished its life and there's also a scrap 2900 rake there as well but uh, there's a lot of parts missing off of that now it's not really of any use i think it's at its end of its end of end of its use go off a scrap one of the days anything of use on it is pretty much gone now at this stage so one final mention while we're here as we do it every year i will give you how our channel is performing so in the last um at the moment we have 1000 sorry 7187 subscribers which is uh it has jumped an awful lot in the last month i would say in the last month we have gained 400 subscribers and we have a hundred thousand views which is massive i didn't think we'd be doing that well um our channel is actually up 120 percent on usual so yeah that's massive thanks very much to all of you who have tuned in and watched the videos and a huge thanks to all of you who tune in every week or you know most of the time we put up two a week so twice a week it's a it's a huge bonus for me thank you very much and it's much appreciated and we'll see you all over christmas and over january i hope it's a good one for you i hope you have a great time and you get some great time with your family and we all get stuck back into work and are flat out again in january so yeah that's it for me thank you very much for watching give the videos an old thumbs up get the subscribe button if it's your first time being here and we'll chat to you all in the comments